Okay, okay. <laughs> Go! You hand me my screen box. Now go free. All right, we're on the record of the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Sedema Skates. Two, three, two, three, four, six, A and B. And counsel, your appearance, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Your Honor, said. John Goldport, P30758, on behalf of Ms. James. Ms. James, would you please put your name on the record? Put some games. And you just speak up, okay? Put some games. Thank you. Okay. And so today is the date scheduled for the arraignment pretrial in this matter. And ask the arraignment. Your Honor, she would charge. I should stand mute to the charges. Waiver form reading of those charges and ask to plead my guilty. All right, the court waiver form reading and plead my guilty for the purpose of the arraignment and as to the pretrial. Your Honor, it's my understanding that in return for the plea to the driving while license suspended, the uh, no proof as well as the expired plates would be dismissed. Uh, for my understanding that. I'm sorry, that was no insurance uh, would be dismissed. Uh, it's my further my understanding that uh, I explained to her constitutional rights. She understands those constitutional rights and wish to accept this the opportunity. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Please raise, raise your right hand. Yes. All right. And you're at the plea that your attorney placed on the record, correct? Yes. As to driving on place suspended, how do you plead? Guilty. Counsel? No, Your Honor. All right. And please run to your client. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gaines, back on November 30th, I'm sorry, November 3rd of 2023, you operated a motor vehicle in the city of Wyandotte. Yes. Did it come a point in time when you came to the attention of the Wyandotte police officer? Yes. And it was a traffic stop. Is that correct? Yes. When he asked you for your driver's license, were you able to provide him with a valid operator's license? No. And was that because it was suspended? Yes. And you knew it was suspended? Yes. That's satisfied. The court was also satisfied the plea is knowing voluntary and factually ever. The court will accept your plea per the plea agreement and uh, dismiss your um, counts A2 and B and counsel as to sentencing. Your Honor, um, Ms. Uh, Gaines is, has a couple more to resolve. Uh, she's following along trying to get her license back. I believe they're all out of Detroit. Which is, of course, it's going to take some time. She understands clearly. Uh, that she is not to operate a motor vehicle. We discussed that again as early as this point. Uh, with that said, Your Honor, we're asking for costs and fines in this particular All right, ma'am, how did you get here today? I don't know. I discussed that with you, Your Honor. So, ma'am, okay. You're aware that in the state of Michigan, driving is a privilege. Yes, I'm right? It's not an automatic right. No. No. Yeah, you seem to think that it is. No, I don't. No. So you have a court date for driving while basically suspended, <laughs> and you drove to that court date. Well, I only drove because I had no other take. Yeah. That is not an excuse to drive at all. No. You've received tickets and you haven't paid them. And because of that lack of responsibility, you've lost the privilege to drive. Yeah. Yet you're continuing to drive. Are you making any alternative arrangements to get anywhere? Yeah, I am. Okay, so why didn't you make alternative arrangements to get here today? Because I didn't plan properly. Why not? Lack of responsibility. Well, all the second responsibility is going to cost you a lot of money, ma'am. Aren't you tired of giving your money to courts? Well, I mean, I guess technically you haven't given your money to courts. That's why you're suspended. But <clears throat> how many tickets do you have out of uh, 36th District do you have to pay? Just one. Just one? No, that's 23rd District. Is that the only ticket? Is that the only reason why you're suspended? Yeah. She told me she thought she had them to try to explore. They tried and I got pulled over for using my phone. That's it. Did you pay that? Did you get a ticket? I still have to go to court for that one. When did you receive that ticket? Mm. Recently. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And so you have a court date scheduled already? Yes? Yes. And how much what how much do you owe to Taylor? 
800. Was that for driving a suspended license? No, that was something else. What was it for? For I got pulled over the freeway for not turning lanes, so there was a cop. Okay. All right. And when was that? That was last year. Okay. Did you work? Yes. No, I am. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Where do you work? We just started doing it. The job today. That's how I always seems to work. I know. Well, she's at the Longhorn up in Allen Park. Okay. And how are you going to get back and forth to work? Well, I have my mom. So why didn't you want to bring you today? Because I was in. She couldn't do this morning. She has my niece to take care of. And she couldn't bring your niece with her? No. And you couldn't Uber or Lyft? I could have Uber. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You're going to figure it out because you're not driving out of this parking lot. Yeah. If you drive out of this parking lot, you will absolutely be arrested. And your car will be impounded and you're going to have a whole lot of other costs. And you for sure won't make it to work today. Right. I don't want to see that happen. So don't drive out of this parking lot. Make other arrangements. I would advise her better when you are. I'm assuming and hoping that she is better. All right. I do appreciate your honesty. All right, the court's going to order a $300 fine, $200 cost, crime victim assessment fee of $75, justice system assessment fee of $50, total $625. So I know you're just starting a new job. How much can you, do you think you can commit to pay per month and what day of the month works the best? Mm, I could do 50 a month. Okay. No, the second week. 50 a month? And can we can you start that in May? How about we stay May 17? Okay. All right, ma'am. Um, have a seat on the lobby, call for a ride, whatever it is, do not drive out of here because they will be watching and you will be arrested. Make sure you get that paid off because you don't pay that off, then you go back into the same situation. Yes. You can always pay it off for Thank you, Anna. All right, thank you. Have a good day. You are not to have any contact with your sister, Jennifer Neal. My sister is my caregiver. You're not to have premises at the home on 23rd Street. I'm sorry? You're not to enter the home on 23rd Street unless you're accompanied by a police officer to obtain your belongings. I... You're not going back to the home. Do you have anywhere else you can stay? So we are going on the record in the matter of the city of Riverview versus Jacqueline Maness. Okay, 211492A. Okay, so, all right. Um, and then we also have, where are all the other files? We also, nope, we have seven for her. And we also have the city of Wyandotte versus Jacqueline Maness, 24350. And there's also 15AC172C, 15640187A, B, and C, 211492B. Also, did you go over all of those with her? Or? Yes, Your Honor. We spoke about the show cause matters that are pending and also the okay. other uh, two criminal charges that are going to be resolved. Okay, and so I'll acknowledge that the 211492A, uh, that's, that was placed on today's date in error. Uh, it's a city of Riverview matter. So oh. that one uh, we cannot do. Mr. Cayley, can you please place your appearance on the record? Roger Cayley, P4, I didn't want to have people sitting in one, Judge. 
All right, thank you. And ma'am, your name for the record, please. Jacqueline Ann Manis. All right, and so today's the date scheduled for the pre-trial in this matter. Um, and there's, well, on the assault and battery, there's also a pre-trial scheduled for the driver license suspended, which counsel that um, this court scheduled. Um, in fact, when I was scheduling everything else, the court um, set the Riverview matter on today's date when it should have been on another date. So 211492A is not going to be resolved today because this is a Riverview matter and not a why not matter. So, um, so counsel, I'm not sure if that, Mr. Cayley, if that um, affects the offer that you had put forward or not. Um, that was one uh, question I had for you. And then the other one is, I just wanted to confirm that you received the notice of prosecuting officials and that had been sent out, correct? Um, I, I have not received it yet, Judge, unless I already received it. If I received it, then I sent it out. Okay, well, I, she was arraigned on April 2nd, so we would have sent it, we would have sent it to you upon arraignment. Yeah, then it was sent out, Judge. All right, and so counsel asked to the pre-trial on 24350. Mr. Cayley, you're all set. Sorry, I just wanted to put all that on the record. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, regarding the assault battery pre-trial, my client, Mr. Bellis, will be offered make. She will plead guilty to one count of disturbing the amended charge of disturbing the peace. That's a separate crossroads motion on the specific original charge of assault battery. All right, ma'am, please raise your right hand. You saw me swear from the testimony about to give this matter to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. And you heard the plea that you're turning place on the record, correct? Yes. As to... The amended charge of disturbing the peace, how do you plead? Guilty. You also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea, whether in this court, any other court, or administrative agency. Yes. And knowing all that, you want to continue with your plea? Yes. You want to promise you anything, threaten you, or coerce you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. All right. And counsel, if you can please pardon your client. On April 1st, 2024, were you in the city of Wyandotte at a house? Yes. And at some time you had a uh, discussion and argument with your sister. Is that correct, Miss Neal? Yes. Yeah. And to the point where the police were called by someone and the police came to your house and you were had been acting loud and boisterous with the argument of your sister. Do you agree? Yes. I'm satisfied. All right, the court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea per the plea agreement and we'll schedule this matter for sentencing on, let's do May 6th. And counsel, what about the show cause matters? What did you uh, work out with the show cause matters? Your Honor, my client recalls these cases uh, back in 2015. She agrees that she more than likely owes some fines and costs that have not been addressed. They went through a lot. Her father was very sick. My client has a spinal cord injury, which he continuously treats for. She's been in custody for 16 days, Your Honor. Leave it in the court's discretion, but one, she wants to actually try to effectuate getting out on some type of a bond to really respect the post and then set up a payment program for the show cause matter. Is that correct, Ms. Manis? Yes, sir. Well, the court the court ordered a $5,000 10% bond on this matter and um, with a number of bond conditions and um, because she has a history of failing to appear and she has, I mean, she owes us I'm she sorry, has a quite a bit of money over the last nine years, but she even failed to appear in matters in 2021. My father was dying from cancer, and I just lost my house to a fire, and then my dad got sick right after, and then I got really sick after he passed away. So it's been one thing after another. And like what year was that, ma'am? That was it started and my dad got sick in 2021. And uh Okay. And man, and I can understand that, but you have a lot of matters from 2015, 2016, 
So it's not just 2021. I never received um, any tickets for that. Never. They were yeah. never put on the door. I forgot. Yeah. Well, what is it? That you never received them or you forgot? I never received them. But when my father passed away, I tried to pay what I had there. And that's when I found out. And then I got really sick after my father died. And I'm still so struggling with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, ma'am, um, there's going to have to be some sort of payment arrangement made. That's fine. And we don't have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these show cause matters and I'm going to adjourn these to August 22nd also. In the meantime, I will convert your bond to a personal bond, but you're not going to be Lisa, a GPS tether. Then what does that consist of? You'll have a tether on you, ma'am, so we know where to find you. If you don't show up again. Okay. So how much do I need to go home? I'm converting it to a personal bond, ma'am. And you, but you'll have to wait until you get that tether. Okay. Which is right there through the Wayne County Jail. Okay. Thank you. April 22nd. And then you'll be back. You have to be back to court on April 22nd. In the event you're still in custody, they will zoom you in. If you're released, you need to make sure you're here in person. I'll probably just stay until my court date. Okay. Um, when can we, what, what kind of payment arrangements can we work out? I don't even know what is owed for those dog um, tickets for the roaming. Well, let's see, there's $200 on one, $200 on another one, that's $400, $200 on another one, that's $600, and $200 on another one, that's $800. I can have that paid off in six months. I don't know if that includes the penalties, the late penalties or not. Okay. I think that it may. I think that it may. So um, we'll address that um, on the 22nd. Okay. In the meantime, in the meantime, um, and when you're here on the 22nd, we'll do, we'll have to have you uh, do your PSI. Well, what is that? All right, and um, she asked a question, Your Honor. PSI means your pre sentence interview or your investigation. Oh, okay. before your okay. sentence. All right, thank you. And then, um, off the record, uh, all right, we're in the on the record of the matter of the city, the city of Wyandotte versus Thomas Chase 24110. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Neil Deloy here on behalf of Thomas Chase. Mr. Chase, would you state your name for the record? Yeah, Thomas Chase. All right, thank you. Is Zoe Bailey present? Okay. And Ms. Bailey, you can step forward. I'm going to have you step forward just a few moments, okay? So if you want to step forward, just have a seat in the um, in that first row. All right, thank you. All right, today's the date scheduled for um, sentencing on your client's plea to an amended charge of disturbing the peace. The original charge of assault and battery have been has been dismissed as a result of the plea. And... <clears throat> um, Counsel, do you have an opportunity to review the report and recommendation with your client? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we've gone through it. He advises there are some small uh, factual adjustments. All right, we'll get to that. Your Honor, a couple of things that were brought up, not particularly material, is uh, age is so he's slightly older than he was. He's 64, not 63. Uh, he completed, uh, I guess he was up to the 12th grade in high school, not 11th as indicated. And he gets a little bit less. His social security payment is uh, approximately hundred dollars less um, than uh, than as his report. Again, I don't think any of that is nine hundred and sixty three dollars. What's one thousand sixty three? But I just got notice from the state that they cut me off for uh, I don't know how much they were contributing to the total, but. Uh, the Social Security Administration cut me off uh, by, they're, they're taking out 106 for about 10 months. <coughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And um, I'm sorry, any other? Um... Uh, you are with that. Um, we find the recommendation of the probation department uh, appears to be consistent with the facts of the case. Um, another thing the client want, wanted to bring up is that uh, he does not have a medical marijuana card, but uh, he 
feels he does have a medical need for it, you just then go to the trouble of getting a medical marijuana card. Before he goes through that, he wants to wonder what the court's position is. Uh, it's the fact that he gets a legitimate prescription. Um, how would that affect uh, the probation, terms of probation? Well, a legitimate prescription would require you to contact uh, your, your treating physician. Yeah. Right? Right. And if your treating physician, somebody that has a medical treating relationship with you, if, you know, with your medical history, whatever that may be, um, recommends you to have use marijuana for medical purposes, then the court would accept that. Okay. But it has to be a treating physician or somebody that you've had a relationship with a medical relationship with so that they're continuing to monitor you, um, you know, just as any other medication that you'd be prescribed, you have regular checkups to uh, you know, regular visits to make sure that everything's still working. Yeah, my doctor's right across the street. I'll take care of that. Okay. Um, right, he would also, sorry, he just indicates to me he would like to take the opportunity to make a statement. Yeah, yeah I'd like to apologize. Uh, totally out of character. I'd like to uh, thank the court for recognizing that. I'm sorry. It's totally, totally out of my character. I mean, uh, it's an anomaly. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And uh, Ms. Bailey is present, so I'm going to give her an opportunity to address the court. So, Ms. Bailey, if you can step forward, oh. please. Counsel, if you and your client can step over by the jury box, please. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe you can stop at the uh, podium if you'd like. And if you could please um, state and spell your first and last names for the record. Zoe Bailey, Z-O-E-Y-B-A-I-L-E-Y. Okay, and can you speak a little bit louder into the microphone, okay, please? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. And thank you for very much for coming in today. You do have the right as a victim of a crime. And um, what would you like the court to know? Really, really nothing. I don't really have nothing to say. Okay. And so you were working that day? Yes, I was. And um, it apparently was a busy day? Yes, it was. And so um, then Mr. Um, Chase made contact with you? Yes. All right. Did you have any injuries as a result of that? No, ma'am. Just let me. Okay. And do you still work there? Yes, I still work there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Did you lose any time at work or anything of that nature? No, ma'am. No? Okay. All right. Anything else you'd like to say? No, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much for coming in. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, Mr. Chase, let me just say this. Yes. Right? We all have bad days. Right? We all have bad days. And we all get frustrated if we're waiting in the drive through somewhere too long, whether it's Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, Tim Hortons, wh whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. But at 64 years old, or 63 at the time, you darn well know better. I agree. And you actually put your hands on an employee. I mean, you want a refund? Okay. But clearly, Clearly, we live in a society where there are more consumers than there are employees. And we also live in a society where instant gratification is king. And patience doesn't really seem to exist in many people anymore. But I know you say it's an anatomy, an anomaly, but you even have you have one way back in 1978, you have one. 78. Well, salt and battery, yeah. That's why it's saying that you're not allowed to go under 771.1. I don't even remember that. And it appears as though, you know, again, in our current society that, um, you know, as is typical, instead of somebody stepping in to assess the situation or assist with the situation, they just get out their phone and record. Right? So, um, I certainly hope, sir, that this is not something that's going to be repeated. No, absolutely not. Whether you've had a long day, a bad day, and quite frankly, if you've had a long, bad day, a drive through is probably not where you want to go. My wife said, I would go. Maybe try DoorDash or Uber Eats or, or not that I, I don't have stock in any of those. Those are just the only ones I know. 
<clears throat> Anything else, counsel? No, Your Honor. All right. And so the court, um, after hearing from counsel, hearing from Mr. Chase, hearing from Ms. Bailey, and reviewing the report, the recommendation, the court does find <clears throat> that the um, recommend that there's reasonable grounds to park on MCL 769.5. <coughs> the recommendation is appropriate for the most part. The court's going to order six months probation. <laughs> you are eligible for early discharge. The court will go over that in just a few moments. You have to violate any criminal law, any criminal law, any unit of government. You're not to leave the state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to your probation officer as often as your probation officer may require, in person, writing, or virtually. You notify your probation officer immediately of any change in address or employment status. Do not use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to, ra to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is so that <clears throat> the court can monitor your progress in maintaining the absence of sobriety. And so if you were to test today, what's in your system? I'm oh, sorry. If you were to test today, what's in your system? Uh, marijuana only. When's the last time you used it? Oh, uh, yeah, marijuana. Uh, about four o'clock this morning. Well, okay, sir. Do you recall at your arraignment that this court ordered not to possess and consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that. Either. Yes. No. Yes, sir. You have, you're not to have any contact with Ms. Bailey. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. You're not to return the Wendy's and wine back at all. The court's going to order a one-day anger management class. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to get is to allow you assistance in learning how to properly express your feelings and needs and to prepare you emotionally for upsetting situations. <clears throat> and there's been zero dollars requested as to restitution. Any questions regarding the terms and conditions? No, no. Ask the fines and costs. The court's going to order a $500 fine, $100 screening assessment fee, $300 supervision oversight fee. That's $50 a month at six months. And since you're eligible for early discharge, some of that money may not be due. $300 to the cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of $75. Justice system assessment fee of $50. So $1,325. And you have any of that to pay today? I can't pay today. Do you have anything to pay today? I don't think so, no. I can probably get some, maybe 50 bucks. What type of payment plan are you proposing, sir? Over a six month period. I got 50, 75 a month. Okay, let's do $50 a month. If you can pay more, then you can pay more. Okay. okay. And what date of the month works best for you? I can trade on the third. So, uh, like, give me a couple of days after the third. So, the fifth? Yeah. Okay. We will begin that on Cinco de Mayo. May 5th. Actually, May 6th because that's a Sunday. All right. And as I did indicate, sir, you're eligible for early discharge so long as all the following have occurred. You've completed at least half of your original term of probation. All probation requirements have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations, and all monies have been either paid full or you've made a good faith effort for making full payment. I know I went through that quickly. Probation will go over that with you I as well. I have a hard time hearing. Okay, well, they'll print it out for you as well, so it will all be in writing as well. Okay? okay? Anything else, sir? No. Okay. No, no. All right. No, sir. Please have a seat over probation. Somebody will be with you shortly. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Ms. Daly. Good morning. good morning. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I apologize. I apologize for your wait this afternoon as well. And um, your name, please. Heather Kerr. Okay. And who do you have with you? I have Dahlia Kerr and her father, Donald. I am Princess Walker, Children's Protective Center. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So <clears throat> we have to make sure we're getting everybody on the recording. So I'm going to have everybody... Um, State their first and last names and spell them, please. So we'll start with you, can you but very loudly into the microphone, please. Dahlia Kerr. Nope. Oh. You can adjust the microphone. Oh, no, that's okay. I just need to be much louder. Dahlia Kerr, D-A-L-I-A-K-E-R-R. -R. Okay. And your name, sir? Donald Kerr. 
Can you spell your first and last names, please? E-O-N-A-L-B-K-E-R-R. -E okay. And I'm sorry, man. I know you said you're with Child Protective Services. Can you state and spell your first and last names? Yes. Princess Walker. First name is P-R-I-N-C-E-S-S. -S. Last name is W-A-L-K-E-R. Okay, thank you. Okay. And um, Heather, I'm sorry. And what is your relation to Dahlia? I'm her mother. Mother. Okay. And so um, this is a, man a matter that... You received a citation for um, education neglect, and um, so CPS is involved. Is that are you involved for some other reason, Ms. Walker? Yes, there's other reasons. I'm sorry, I'm not making you all the way up. Sorry. Yes, there were some other concerns that were going on in the home, and CPS is addressing that. Okay, all right, <clears throat> and this just happened to be another matter, and so then you're um, here to observe what's happening today, or that's correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right, and so um, there's been a recommendation by the prosecutor to adjourn this matter to show improvement. How many days has Dahlia missed? Uh, about eight in the last three weeks. In the last three weeks? Yes. So in one of those weeks, wasn't one of those weeks spring break? Yes. So really in the last two weeks, she's missed eight days. Uh, about that, yes. So out of Five, five days each week of school, that's 10 days. So she's gone to school two days in the last 10 days? Yes. Why is that? She refuses to get up and go. Dahlia, how old are you? I'm 12. Okay. And so what is going on that you are refusing to go to school? I just get ignored all the time. I'm sorry? I just get ignored all the time. Ignored by whom? By everybody. I, you get ignored by everybody. What do, I don't know what that means and why that would affect you from going to school to learn. What What does that mean? Um, well, so you are getting ignored by people. How does that affect your learning? I would think that would be the best environment for learning at all, because then you can just focus on what the teacher is telling you. Can you please look up this thing? What? Okay. So your mom wakes you up for school. Is that yes? I, we're recording you, ma'am, so we need you to speak yes or no. Yes. Okay. And so your mom wakes you up, and what do you do? I, I, and you just speak directly in the microphone, please. I, I like saying that in the break. Ma'am, okay. I'm sorry. Dahlia, I just, we're recording, so I need you to stay close to the microphone and speak up, okay, please? So that I don't, have to, so that I don't need to uh, interrupt you, okay? Um, I just like saying, like, no, and I, like, Putting the blanket over me. Okay, you have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to attend school. And to do your homework. And to turn it in. You don't get the choice to say, I'm not going to school today. You don't get that choice. When you graduate high school and you don't want to go to school anymore, that's your choice. You don't get a choice. You're not the one that got the ticket, your mom did. And if she continues to get them, then they turn into criminal misdemeanors. And then she can go to jail. Is that what you want for your mom? Then you need to start getting out of bed and going to school. There may be people that ignore you. There may be a lot of people that you think ignore you. They may think you ignore them also. So unless you have communication, you won't know. All right, we'll adjourn this matter to May 29th, okay, okay at um, 2.15. Okay. Are you turning it? Are you doing your homework? I'm, I'm scared to ask them for it. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm just scared to ask them for it. Why? Why? Okay, Dahlia, here's the, here's the deal, okay? All right, please look at me, okay? Here's the deal. 
the teachers want you to succeed. Because when students succeed, it looks better for them. Teachers don't want to fail students. Teachers don't want to punish students. They're in the business of teaching because they want individuals to learn and succeed. So start off with having a conversation with one, right? There has to be one of the teachers that you feel more of a connection to than others, right? Is that yes or no? Yes. Okay. Which teacher is that? Mr. Rose. I'm sorry? Mr. Rose? Mr. Rose. Mr. Rose. Mr. Rose. Okay. So ask them for a meeting, right? Say, hey. You're saying, Mr. Rose, can I talk to you? After, can I meet with you after school? Right? And then do that. Meet with them after school. Mm-hmm. And let them know, you know, some of your frustrations and ask if he can help talk, help you speak with the other teachers. Right? Is that something that might make you feel a little bit more comfortable? Yeah. A little less nervous? Okay. So try that. Do you have, you have a way to communicate, send an email or something to them? Is that yes? Yes. Okay. So when you leave here, send them an email. So that you all meet tomorrow after school. So long as his schedule accommodates that. Okay? Yes. And then I want you to send an email here to the school, to the court tomorrow after you meet to let me know how it went. Okay? Got it? Okay, if you don't, I'm going to have you come back in here before May 29th. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, have a good day. We'll see you back on May 29th. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are going on the record in the matter of the city of Inabers, Brendan Goblehopper, 24W66743. Good afternoon. Your name, please. Brandon Goblehopper. <clears throat> Just speak up a little bit more, sir, please. Brandon Goblehopper. All right, thank you. Your name, please, mom? Amanda Goble. Okay. And <clears throat> your mom, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. And so, um, Brendan, do you have a black eye on your left eye? It looks as though. Oh, okay, so. Oh, it looks as though something happened to your left eye. What's been going on? We have this set for a review, and then some things weren't done, so we adjourned it to today's date. And um, the court uh, told you you needed to um, abide by a curfew, didn't, didn't I? No, I didn't tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. <clears throat> and have you been abiding by the curfew? No, you haven't. Why not? There's no good reason for why I haven't. Well, I didn't ask for a good reason. I just asked for a reason. Your disrespect for authority, sir. Is very it's very very concerning. Are you still participating in outpatient therapy? Yes, ma'am. Are you participating in family therapy? Yes, ma'am. And are you complying with your mom's rules at home? Partly. Okay. What parts are you complying with? Well, you answered partly. So, what are you complying with? Right. Some of the time. Some of the time. Yes. That's yes. <clears throat> okay. You have a number of cases, sir, <clears throat> and you seem to have zero respect for authority. Zero. So you were not going to do, sir. You want to just take it upon yourself to leave and disregard the court's orders. There's consequences. And so this court's going to order a GPS tether on you. If you leave and violate any of the conditions of your tether, you very well could be in jail, sir. Is that where you would like to be? No, yeah. Because if that's the case, I can send you there right now. Is that where you want to go? No, yeah. Then I suggest you start following the directions of your parents of your grandparents, and you follow the orders of this court. Mom, anything you'd like to you'd like to say? I don't believe so. No, I, I'm 
hope, hoping that the tether will work. I'm at a loss myself, honestly. Well, I do have some concerns that um, Brendan's going to stick around while we wait for the tether company to come here because they're going to come here. So that's more money that your mom's going to have to pay for them to come here and for the monthly monitoring costs. Because you choose to just do whatever in the world you want to do. That's not how this world operates. I'm sure there's a lot of things your mom would like to do, but she can't. So while we're waiting, mom, if you have, don't have any objection, I will have him sitting in that, on that bench right there, waiting, well, uh, handcuffed to the bench, waiting for EMS Tether to get here. Do you have any objection to that? Okay. okay. You're going to go right on over here, sir. You're not free to leave until after EMS Tether gets here. And the court's going to order um, that you have specific curfew times and that you are technically will be on house arrest other than going to school, your house, or your grandparents. And just so you know, sir, they're going to be able to see where in, within the school where you're at. So if you're not in class and you're expected to be in class, that's a violation. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And if you were to test what's in your system today? Negative. And where are you getting that from? My friends. Your friends. Anything else in your system? No. No marijuana? No. Did I already have you doing random drug testing? Yeah. Have you been doing it? I haven't yet. You just identify for the record, please. Hi, this is Marcy Shine. Um, I spoke with the DRMM, he showed up for one class and then left 15 minutes into it. So she didn't even get a chance to, okay. to test or do anything with him. And are they able to do anything in the home or is it uh, only- I have to contact her regarding okay. that. Okay. I believe she was supposed to reach out to me. There was a little bit of issue when she got, I guess, a new way of kids when there was some conflict with having certain kids there together on certain days. I thought she was going to reach out to me last week. She didn't. So I was waiting till after today to know what was happening. And I said I was going to reach out to her to find out um, a little bit more of when he's actually supposed to see her now. Okay. And that she had to rearrange some things. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going, we're going to check to see if she can come into the home to do it. Sure. Because I think it might be a little bit more effective for Brendan at this point. Absolutely. Um, okay. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to contact um, the tether. It might uh, might be. Hopefully they can get here within an hour or two. But I don't know. It might be a little bit later than that. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. I want you to um, seriously think about having your movement restricted. Because if you violate this, sir, that's, that's the next step. But not out this way where you can even see all these individuals. Understand that? Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to just have a seat in the lobby for a few minutes. Sure. Okay, thank you. Or if you want to even um, have a seat over in probation, that Marcy can speak with you just a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, this is the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Ashley Gallagher, 23W92780. Good afternoon. Your name, please. Good afternoon, Ashley. Okay. And all right. And ma'am, you received a citation for mandatory school attendance and educational neglect regarding your son Anthony, correct? Yes. And you attend the middle school? Yes. All right. And you had an opportunity to speak to the prosecuting attorney today, correct? Correct. And this had previously been adjourned from February 28th to monitor attendance and grades. And it appears as though there's been improvement. And so the prosecutor. There's a uh, recommended to delay process matter. Is that your understanding? Yes. But I would like to also state, Your Honor, even when there's a temporary little improvement in Anthony, you don't see him here today. I did sign him out of school. He wouldn't get in the car. And I'm losing control. You signed him up. You you signed him out of school for him to come here today? He's here with me today. Honor, he thinks I can buy him out of this issue. It's beyond that. 
six, he thinks because I'm successful and I have whatever he thinks I have or own that he's okay and I can just get him out of things. However, mom, this is beyond most. This is beyond a tether even. It's beyond words. Okay. He's five foot five, <clears throat> 108 pounds solid, play sports. He's not going to be able to play sports if you don't go or if he doesn't continue to trade. I'm losing them to the Mexican girl. And so you signed him out of school. And so where did where did he get? Did he did you bring him, put him in the car with you? I couldn't. I begged him. Even the school officer, even the school officer and the principal of Wilson, seen and heard it all. Right in the line. Um, my words mean nothing. Your words. He was too nervous, maybe to come back to you because you kind of called him out on something, and his reaction was. Um, he was uncomfortable at night, and that's why he wasn't able to wake up for school. Those, those are, that's a loss for words. He was supposed to stay with my brother because it's an authority thing. I don't know if my voice just Oh, I remember that, because where does your brother live? Brownstown. Oh, that's right. Brownstown. Yes. So I tried what, to What's your son's name again? Anthony Gallagher. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. And he's about five foot five, solid, 180, 85 pounds, very athletic. I mean, he is an IEP program. We've noticed a little bit of his learning curve with reading, but everything else there shouldn't be an issue with. He's not doing his work. We're, we're losing him, and this is well bad. We, well, we can do one of a couple of things. You can um, we can adjourn this, and I can order he appear at the next one. I told him you ordered him to, and he fought me tooth and nail. When you. When you, when we lost, last seen you, or last court date, you said, what is this? Are you just upset because you don't want to listen to your mom? And he said, no, I'm just uncomfortable. Just those couple of words that you asked him, and I said, she also requested that you came back because you were here the first time with me. And I would like you to also go there and tell her your side. I don't want to, have, I don't want to coach a word to you because I don't want to know how you feel inside. I want you to explain to her why you're not going. And I understand it's only a couple more absences, but guess what? They're on excuse for a reason, because I'm not going to get you a letter for, there's a difference between lazy and, and sick. And if you're lazy, I'm not getting you out of it. And he thinks I can come here, pay a couple hundred dollars and walk my way out. Yeah, I may be able to do that or whatever those terms may be, but you're not holding your end as a child. You're not getting up, you're not doing. Once you go to school, you're socializing. You're doing nothing. It's like a, you can hand him a uh, assignment and he turns it in with not even, even a name on it. And he's not just disrespecting me, he's disrespecting our name. Our last name. We, I grew up in the same school district. I went to the same elementary, the same middle school and hopefully we see him in Roosevelt, but the way it's looking, this kid doesn't care. And I really hate to put this because I could just dismiss at this point, but then what, just to see you again before the end of the school year because he's not going to listen to me? Oh, thank you. And I hate to go against my own my own flesh and blood, but I have to be honest with you, or else I'm going to lose it. Well, no, I mean it's called tough love, and there's a lot of, and unfortunately, there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> there's a big lack of that. There's a huge lack of that in society um, with parental figures and guardians um, and parents. So, um, well, Judge, I'm sorry if I may. I was yes. in contact with the truancy officer. He'll be coming to court pretty soon on a prohibitive conduct. So um, I just spoke with what? the truant officer today. So. Okay. So you know, what I, you know what I can do is, well, we can null the process or I can adjourn this to the date that he's coming um, to handle that both, whichever you prefer. Sure. The truancy officer heard the whole conversation with um, Anthony Gallagher and I, Ashley Gallagher, on the wet walk out of the school. They heard me verbally tell him, you requested him here. Now, was that on the, the truancy officer was able to read that throughout the records? Maybe not. But you did re you did in lighter lighter terms kind of request him to come today. And I let him know that. And he took off. Okay. Uh, Allie, can you see is there anything in there for Anthony Gallagher? Yes. Please. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Well, Judge, I'm not sure it'd be in the system. I mean, I think this just happened today. Oh, it was just today. Today. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a note because right now our um, some of our cases are getting out a little bit because there's so many of them. Yes. And as you can tell, our Wednesdays are very full days. Um, and so I will make a note that that is going to be on the docket within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Okay. Um, and so then I will adjourn this one as well. Um, well, instead of doing the Nolay Frost, what we'll do is we'll hold off on the Nolay Frost and then we'll adjourn this and we'll put Anthony's. I'm going to adjourn this to May 15th. I'm at a conference on May 8th. I mean, I guess I could probably do May. What's our, what do we look like on May 1st? Yeah. On May 1st? Okay. We'll adjourn this to May 1st at 3.15. Okay. And then we'll also um, set his for May 1st. At 3.15, we just have to watch it come through so we can set it um, for that date. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. All right. In the meantime, any suggestions? Well, I've looked into. I have a lot of suggestions, but probably not. I should probably put on the record, but. Electric chair. Um, I've looked into things, programs. Costing up to $8,000 at this point, I'm willing to take a chance. I can't lose him. Is he in any therapy? Supposed to be. But he doesn't go? No. All right. Well, um... I'm in therapy and I attend without a doubt. I'm trying to show him that this isn't the way life works. Well, has he has he gone to any of his appointments for therapy? <coughs> the initial intake. He used to go to the guidance center, um, and I tr I was trying to get us both together as family therapy because he told me if I did it that way that he would go. So I leaked out and I tried, and the, he, all he's made it through is the initial intake. What was that? Um. This was in the middle of the second week of February. I want to say the 14th and 16th. Was there a teacher at school that you know that he um, is okay with? or He has to talk to all of them. He's always in trouble. He's always up to no good. Um, they have done everything in their power to help me. They're looking into moving him to schools. Over the weekend? Uh, yes, but I haven't told. We have the... the I'm sorry. The principal and I decided to not tell Anthony that we were trying to get him in there because we know what he's going to most likely do and he's going to most likely say no or react as if you don't have to go to school in the meantime at all. Right. Well, you're trying to put me in a spot, you know, different place. And we were treading lightly between just us. I went there today at when I picked him up, I signed a document for, for Beacon. I went to the Board of Education to speak with them in between our last court date and now they requested me to for a meeting. I said, absolutely, I would love to. And that's what they requested, is maybe that could help. But even the principal and the truant officer is most likely going to tell you the same thing. We're all on the same page. He's in a whole different world. And he is spiraled out of a different control in the last year. And I don't even mean as in like running the streets late at night or anything like that. He is just when he when Anthony would want to do it is when it will happen. And that's going to school late. Me Ubering him there. Cause I have, I'm sorry, son, I have a time clock every single morning that go I have to punch in at. I don't have time. I wake up at 6 a.m. to try to get you to school by 7:45 walking out of the door. That's an hour and 45 minutes. And you're gonna tell me you can't get up. Well, oh, maybe um, maybe stop and bring him to school. I know that that ends up looking bad for you. That's what I was too nervous about. Right. Perhaps. I mean, you're making things way too convenient for him. I felt the same way, but in the same manner, I didn't want you to think that I was letting him down easy. No, I, I understand. I understand. It's a catch-22. So maybe, you know, maybe don't make it easy for him. I don't, I don't know if that's going to affect him or not, but we can address that on me first, and we'll have we'll have both you back on me first. Okay. All right. Good luck to you, ma'am. I'll see you back in a couple of weeks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Are you kidding me? Oh my God! You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today?
This is this is dirt. This is dirt. Jay is absolutely dirt. He needs an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself. Oh my God, sir! Put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of her. This what is wrong with everybody today? You know what? Let's read. We're gonna start reading these people. We're gonna learn how to act in the courtroom. Can you hear it? Can you hear it, man? Trust me, at the end of the day, I'm sitting up here, I'm the one that needs a drink.